Hi, I'm Ben Greenman. Uh, I'm from Miami, but I now live in Brooklyn. Being a writer is a great job, except for all of the horrible things about it. Uh, and there are many of those. I don't know that I should go through them all, but a lot of them have to do with uh, internal pressures and a lot of them with external pressures. And it all adds up to one giant, great mix of horribleness. So this story is called Stripped. When I landed in Portland, I went through the concourse slower than usual. I was on a book tour, and I was tired. Musicians can be on the road for months at a time. Athletes travel for every away game, but authors are lightweights. It was my third book, and I wasn't sure what the point was. Not of a book, but of the book tour. You show up in a city where people may have read something that you wrote, and you try to convince them to love you enough to lay out money for a little more of you. You sell some books, never as many as you want. The whole operation occurs at a loss, a financial loss, a spiritual loss. And I was at a loss for understanding it. It was a week into the tour, and I was beginning to wilt. I stopped for coffee to try to fix things. There at the coffee shop, I heard two things about Portland that would condition the rest of my time there. The first was from an older woman talking on her phone. It's beautiful here, she said, even though it was pouring rain outside. An optimist. The second was from a young guy talking to a friend. Portland has tons of strip clubs, he said. Also an optimist. It rained all day, and when I tried to wander away from my hotel, I got only three blocks where I waited under an awning just outside a strip club. <laughs> that night, it was still raining when I went to the bookstore to read. Some people were there. There are always some people. But if you added them all up and you imagine that each of them would buy two books, it still wouldn't cover the cost of the plane ticket in the hotel. There was a local TV crew, which was odd, and the reporter was a man named Joe Smith. Joe Smith. I was sure he was an actor hired by my publisher to impersonate a TV reporter to boost my spirits. <laughs> it didn't work. I read. I answered a few questions. Did I like my job? I did. Was it ever depressing? It was. I sold some books and tried not to count how many. When I finished, I noticed that a friend of mine had come out to see me. He's a writer, too, and we stood around for a little while before we, before we realized that we didn't want to be in an empty bookstore any longer than was absolutely necessary. We went to a bar instead with some friends of his, and he introduced me to his fiancée, who would, in a matter of days, become his wife. Behind us at the bar, there was a group of guys. One of them said something about a strip club, and someone at our table made a joke about my friend's bachelor party. My friend's face clouded a little. There was no party. Hey, someone said, Ben should take you to one of Portland's finest strip clubs tonight. I didn't know anything about Portland's finest, but I knew the place with the awning near my hotel. And when I mentioned it, my friend nodded. OK, he said. I've never been there. I said. Are you just saying you've never been there because your fiancé can hear you? Your secret's safe with me. He said, she can hear you too. <laughs> we dropped off his fiancé and went to the club. The place wasn't crowded, but it was more crowded than the bookstore. <laughs> the crowd was diverse in a sense. There were two over-muscled young men with crew cuts, a few weedy types wearing warm-up jackets, one older obese man with a newsboy cap. There were two dancing platforms, and in the corner of the room, a middle-aged woman announcing the dancers and playing music. We sat at the bar and watched one woman on the pole. Well, my friend watched. The woman was behind me. I felt strange, turning and gawking. Across the club, girls in skimpy outfits approached the guys at the bar. We were the guys at the bar. A girl approached us. She was short, with long brown hair and gigantic brown eyes. She would have been pretty outside the strip club, and she was pretty inside of it. I told her that my friend was getting married, and he smiled and bought her a drink. Then he started asking her questions. Did she like her job? Was it ever depressing? Writers. 
She told us about the club manager and how he monitored all the private rooms on closed circuit TV. She told us about how some of the dancers drank too much and ended up compromised in the parking lot at closing time. She was in school, of course, and she told us that she was nervous about her final exams. Behind her, a girl went up and down on the pole. My friend asked her for her name, and she said something I couldn't hear, but, w but which was almost certainly fictional. What do you guys do, she said. We're writers, my friend said again. He motioned at me. In fact, he's in town for his book tour. What's the book, she said. I wrote the title down on a napkin. Thanks, she said. Listen, I'm dancing in a minute. Come over and see me, OK? She went in the back to undress. My friend turns his ha turned his hands palm up in disbelief. You told her the title? Sure, I said. Otherwise, how will she buy the book? <laughs> but now she knows your real name, he said. What if she mentions you on her blog or something? She has a blog, I said. <laughs> The house DJ announced our new friend's appearance, so we collected our drinks and went to sit on the edge of the stage next to the guy in the newsboy cap. When she came out, she was naked, which was unsurprising and even a bit dispiriting. She bent over and looked backwards at us. She hung her head over the edge of the stage into my friend's lap. We dropped a number of singles onto the stage, and she smiled, which displeased the newsboy. He tried to regain his advantage by outbidding us. I looked, then looked away, then looked again. It wasn't particularly sexy, which confused me. Was it my fault? Maybe I needed to drink more. <laughs> I finished my beer. The dance lasted two songs, and that was it. My friend and I went to the bar, and the girl came and sat with us. It was difficult to pick up the thread of our conversation. Were we supposed to congratulate her on her dancing? Was she, was she supposed to thank us for dropping dollar bills next to her naked body? <laughs> Something had been added to the dynamic and also subtracted. For a little while, she was quiet, and then she cleared her throat. She said, no one's falling in love with me tonight. She told us she had paid $50 to dance on the feature stage, and to make the money back, she needed to entice at least a few men into private dances in the back rooms. We didn't know what to say, and so we said nothing. She went to put more clothes on, and my friend and I talked drunkenly about the similarities between writers and strippers. I started. <laughs> Both of us demonstrate our skill for the benefit of others, never knowing exactly how we'll be repaid. I stopped. It was ridiculous. Strippers and writers were nothing alike, except for their common humanity and their outsized expectations and their sadness when those expectations weren't met and their inability to fend off that sadness. <laughs> Before we left, I wished the girl luck. On what, I wasn't sure. The rest of her life? School? Getting someone to fall in love with her? She shook my hand and wished me luck on my book tour. That's it. Thank you.